Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, everybody. You are watching After Buzz TV's very special edition called Spotlight On. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button on YouTube and click that thumbs up because without your support, we cannot be here doing this. Now, today I'm very excited to present a very special light, Spotlight, on the actress that you might have seen on TNT's Rizzolian Isles or AMC's Turn. Very warm welcome to Adara Victor. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm so good. It's wonderful to have you so here. Good. It's great to be here. And it's nice and cool in the studio. It, it, the AC turned Thankfully. on. It was. It's so hot in Los Angeles. It's you over guys. 100 degrees. Ooh. It's rough. We are. Nice we are sweating mm -hmm. up a storm. Mm -hmm. But before we get started on the interview per se, I just want to do a little getting to know you. Okay. So I'm just going to do some quick questions and just give me the first answer that comes to your mind. Okay. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Favorite drink. Oh, is this like liquor? Anything. <laughs> Liquid that you swallow. Um, a dirty martini. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Favorite food? Pizza. Favorite place? Central Park. Last person you text? My boyfriend. <laughs> you sound really excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest pet peeve? Um, oh, um, nails on a chalkboard. Ooh, ooh, no. One thing people would not expect to know about you? Um... Hmm. I play piano. One thing you could take with you on a desert island. Only one. Lip gloss. <laughs> Favorite movie? Um, Up. Oh. And Guilty Pleasure. Yes. Uh, guilty Pleasure. Um, oh. Hagen dazs Rum Raisin Ice Cream. Oh. That's a good Guilty Pleasure. Mm -hmm. You survived. That was it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I already know so much about you. <laughs> So, um, the Rizzoli and Isle season six just started. Yes. How do, how do you feel? Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We started off kind of with a bang. I mean, we have a lot happening mm -hmm. in this season. I mean, like huge changes going on this yeah. season. And some of them I can talk about now, but some of them would spoil the surprise. All right. Yeah. All right, well, I'll try and get out of you what I can. <laughs> um, now, your character is succeeding the, the death of Lee Thompson Young, mm -hmm. and it seems like the show has really been trying to keep his spirit alive. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what it's like to be in a show succeeding a character that's unfortunately passed unexpectedly. How does that feel? Well, I feel, I have to say that I heard about Lee's passing um, before I knew him or even had any, you know, um, even, even really had an understanding of the show. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it kind of it hit me kind of hard because, you know, as a as an actress in Hollywood, hearing something like that is just difficult and you want to you want to understand, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so when I got the opportunity to step into the show, the show and they created this new role for me, I felt really grateful and I felt like it was a like I felt reverent. To his spirit, you know, like I wanted to honor the role in a in a very specific way. I wanted to make sure that I was doing it justice. And um, and um, when I got there, everybody just kept talking about the bright light that Lee was. And thankfully, they brought me in into the family. Like you know, they were all really warm, and it was hard on everyone. You know, it wasn't it wasn't that long before I came in. Um, so it was that everyone was still grieving and moving through that process, but was so warm and loving and just embraced me wholeheartedly. And a lot of people said, you know, that there was like a lightness and a brightness of spirit that Lee had that I kind of had as well. And so, I don't know, I like to think that somehow he's, he's, you know, he, he gave me the go ahead and like, you know, shined on yeah. kind of a thing. So, um, I just feel super grateful. I feel really, really grateful and, and I'm glad that, um, that the foundation that his um, his parents founded that it's shining a light on mental illness and we're all taking a closer look at that. Absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, 
after the past episode, some fans are thinking there's a love connection between your character, Nina, and Rizzoli. <laughs> yeah, you know... <laughs> I have to say, to be really, really honest, um, when I came in for the audition, I actually thought that was going to be the deal with them because it, I, they were flirting kind of in the in the scene that they gave me for the audition, and so my very, very first scene in the show is with Frankie, um, and I feel like there's a vibe right away there, but there's, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's if we're going to take it there. It's all up to the writers, obviously, but. Um, as of now, they have a really, really cool friendship developing, and we have some scenes coming up where you really get to see that even more. So I'm surprised that even just that little bit of, I guess, kind of flirting that we did in the last episode really brought our fans to be like, go Frankie and Nina. I mean, they're they're hardcore about it. Um, <laughs> We have a lot more coming up, so I'm really interested Ooh. to see how they feel about it once it once it happens. Fantastic. <laughs> the fans of the show are crazy. They're crazy. In the best way, I but they're so them. invested in the show. Oh my god. Have you had what is your craziest fan interaction that you've had? Hmm. Craziest crazy crazy is a tough word. Most my, memorable? My most memorable my most memorable, and that's why I said crazy is a tough word, because I actually loved it so much. Um, my most memorable is a fan who lives in um, Bulgaria and actually started a fan page about me. And um, was she found all of these pictures and clips from my from my past and like, you know, posted them on this page. And it was a little surreal at first seeing them because I was like, where did how'd she even how'd she find this? But it was also really exciting because I could like go back and, you know, see all these things and see that somebody appreciated it and appreciated me and like would pay attention to, you know, what was going on with my mom and all this stuff. She was just really involved. and. Um, and we formed like our own little relationship because of that, you know, and so she'll tell me about exams that she has coming up and stuff. And I'm like, good luck. And it's really, really cool. It's really cool to, to have fans that are all over the world connecting with me directly, yeah. you know, and that that's a new experience for me. And with Rosalian Isles, I mean, our fans are they're from Brazil, Italy, Germany, everywhere, you know, and so that's been that's been really cool. Now yeah. that you have fans, you need to do like what Lady Gaga does and name her fans. Like she I names, know. well, every yeah, celebrity names so her fans true. now. Like Lady Gaga's fans are little monsters. That's so What would true. yours be called? Let me see. <laughs> well, people call, some people call me Edie instead of Edara. So maybe it could be like Edie. Edieites or Edel Edie. Ooh. I kind of like that. Editeites. Yeah. How would you spell that? I gotta write this down. E. I gotta figure out how we'd spell this. You'd e. spell this e. D yeah. D I. E that looks weird. That looks weird. No. Mm. Well, e I'm sure your fan from Bulgaria is watching. So work on that work one. Work on that one. Fan. We'll figure this out together. Do you have a favorite behind the scenes moment on Resilient Isles? <laughs> Yesterday. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> He's gonna be so upset that I'm bringing this up, but Perfect. yesterday, Jordan comes in to shoot, covered in poison oak. <gasps> oh, <laughs> and that's so, sad. I mean, thankfully we're wearing we're fully clothed, you yeah. know, on the show. But um, but he came in, and you know, he'd gone on Father's Day with his daughter, like in the woods playing, and and um, somehow got poison oak, you know, and and so he's like dealing with that and it happened a few days after that the actual blow up happened so it's like he's like my legs feel like sausages in my pants and I can't move and I'm itchy and, and so we're all kind of like I you know just being sweet about it but then he didn't tell Angie that he had it and so when she saw him she you know gave him a hug and a kiss like usual oh, and no. and um, <laughs> once she found out you know, and it's not contagious at this point. Oh, it's I mean, not. he's had several showers. Yeah, okay. it's like he's had, he's had several showers since. It's not, I think you'd have to have the actual oil from the plant still on you okay. for it to be contagious. Oh, but yeah. yeah, but I think like psycho, you know, she, she like literally psychosomatically was like, wait, I'm itching. I, what, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening to me? And so like, you know, through yesterday, she was just like, my lips itch. What's happening? Like it kept, it was getting worse and worse through the day. 
that was kind of fun because then we were like, then it just became this like joke, family joke of like, oh, the leper, like stay away, Jordan. Like he touched me at one point because I would flubbed a line and I was like, don't touch me, Jordan. You know, it was like, it's just a fun thing we messed with him all day about. But, oh, the set yeah. leper. Yeah. Oh, Jordan. I know. Get better, Jordan. I know. Please get better, please. Soon. Tell me about your experience on the show Turn. Oh, that gem of a show. You I loved, loved it. I love, 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 loved it. Yes, I loved it. Um, Do you have a favorite shot... moment from that, too? Um, hmm, what's my favorite behind the scenes? You know, I don't have anything in particular that's sticking out to me, but one thing that did happen was that JJ and I, um, from the moment we started shooting, became really, really close. Like, we had some really deep conversations about, like, life and... Um, and um, just learned so much about each other really quickly, which I felt like, and that was the first day we were working together, and I felt like it infused the scenes with Abigail and John Andre so much. So then um, there was this relationship that was already developed really, really quickly. That um, show also really took off. It did, People yeah. were buzzing about that. Yeah, yeah, our fans are so, amazing for that show too they're really vocal right now about renewing the show mm -hmm. and have been doing this really cool campaign and i just i feel so like they've made me so emotional you know with the things that they've said and stuff about abigail i just love that they've really responded so much to the show and to and to her that's very cool yeah i want to take a step back and start at the beginning of your career okay. or even before you had a career yeah all right did you always want to be an actor i did but I just liked posing and looking <laughs> cute. So like, it wasn't even like, Before was, Instagram. Yeah, like before Instagram, like there's this picture of me at like three years old at my mom's job. And I'm like having a photo shoot. And she worked at like the Nigerian consulate in, in New York. And I'm like, I mean, literally like very serious. I mean, I'm three and I'm <laughs> very serious in my outfit. And I had my little heart purse on and I was Perfect. just like posing. I had a full, photo shoot that happened and I remember that that was very specific to me <laughs> like so I would so my parents I guess there was this old commercial that they used to watch that the person said um I'm not a oh, movie star denture wearer like it was like some some star would say something and be like you know like it'd be like I'm Carol Burnett not that Carol Burnett did these but be like I'm Carol Burnett movie star denture wearer <laughs> and so my parents would say to me like you know oh look it's our movie star and I'd be like and then they'd be like denture wearer and I'm like I'm not a denture wearer but I'm a movie star you know <laughs> so I guess I knew I always wanted to do it but I saw it more just from the I think the glamour and the the shoots and all of that stuff and then it wasn't until I was um, seven and I did like a school play and then I really fell in love with the acting part of it. So I always wanted to do it, but I definitely didn't think I was going to, even going into college, I was like, well, it's not gonna happen. Is the life of an actor that you're living right now what you anticipated it would be like or ever dreamed of? Hmm. In a lot of ways, yes. And I and that's a really recent realization because I think a lot of times we're so like tunnel vision going after whatever it is that we're doing and we're working and we're so like caught in our work that we don't take like the we don't take the step back to look at or certainly for myself I didn't take the time to sort of step back and look at my life mm -hmm. from that standpoint and recently I did and I was like oh my god like so many things are, I was at it was because I was driving down the street and the streets were lined with these palm trees and I was thinking of the movie Slums of Beverly Hills <laughs> and I, mean, I was thinking like oh wow, it's it's happening, like I'm actually here and I'm doing it and my life is actually, it's going on and I'm not just in the slums of Beverly Hills, like on the outside of it, I'm I'm actually working and doing it and that was an amazing feeling. A surreal yeah. feeling. Yeah, yeah. Tell me your proudest moment in your career thus far. Hmm, my proudest moment. Oh. I would have to say it was when I got to go on as Cosette for the first time in Les Miserables because the director told me that I was the first African American to ever play the role. Um. And that was really cool. And so knowing that, like knowing, and it was funny because when I got the show and I'd tell people, they'd say, oh, are you playing Eponine? And I'd be like, no, Cosette. And it was always like a kind of shocking, like, huh, that's really interesting thing. And even for myself, I didn't realize I didn't realize it until the director told me that in all the productions all over the world, they'd never had an African American Cosette. Wow. So 
Good that was you. cool. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That's like something that you should have as a bumper sticker on your car. Like, <laughs> proud <laughs> to be first African American cousette. <laughs> I should. I and should. Then next to like you know proud dog owner. Yes, something. I'll do that. We'll make that bumper sticker for I'm, you. Thank you. Go. I'm holding you to that. Yeah, and I hopefully will. it's like I'll in the through. in the black and yellow of the yeah absolutely. The well, theme. it'll say After Buzz and giant yes. wording and then teeny and then tiny teeny, letters. Oh. I play Cosette. Of course it Got will. Got a brand new doors. You know. Got to be a trick always. I don't. I don't run it. I just. Uh, I just make the bumper stickers. <laughs> <laughs> What's a dream role for you? <sighs> A dream role for me. Yeah. Um, I want to play a queen in a movie, like Queen and Zynga. You know, I saw I saw Kate Blanchett do Elizabeth, and that was the reason why I really wanted to do, why I really wanted to act. Like, I that was what made me go. I'm doing it. I don't care. I don't care. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna go for it because I just want to do that movie. You know, like I want to do. You just want to do it I again. I want to do it again. Do it I want to just do, yeah, like everything she did in that movie. I just want to repeat it. Well, with the way the <laughs> film industry is going and the superhero movies reboot every six months, you probably could, yeah, I within could. the next three years, feasibly. I could maybe take do that it. Role. I could maybe do it, but I would want to play like a real, you know, like a real queen that had those kind of challenges, like Queen and Zynga. I'd want to do something like that and like ride horses and. Yeah, that you know, does sound rule great. Rule a country. That does sound great. Yeah. That's yeah. a good that's a good dream role. <laughs> if I were an actor, I think I'd say the same thing. <laughs> what uh do you have a dream co star? Male or female? Oh. Or Tom animal? Hardy. Ooh. You wanna be sure he's in my stuff? dreams a lot, so <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say he's my dream co star. Yeah, he wouldn't be too bad to look he's at. He's not, yeah. Who's your celebrity crush? Tom Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, that's who else can I? Answer. I mean, he's really beautiful. He is. Um, who is my celebrity crush other than Tom Hardy? Um, uh, you know, Idris Elba kind of has recently stolen my heart a little bit. Yeah, all my girlfriends have been on it for a long time, but. You I jumped just joined on the bandwagon. bandwagon late. Totally did. Better late than never. Mm -hmm. Favorite and least favorite thing about the entertainment industry? My favorite thing is that it is all made up. Like, mm -hmm. and we are doing it. You know, like we, we, my favorite thing about it is that I was telling my sister this. I was like, we, it's, it's art. We're creating art and we're all doing it. And there's no guarantees. And it's a it's an industry to me that relies completely on faith and i just think that's really cool and i think it's cool that a bunch of artists are just like we're going to create a whole industry around this so that i love that's great um my least favorite thing hmm my least favorite thing i would say my least favorite thing is that that there's any competition at all for roles like a part of me wishes that there were just more projects made in general so that there could just be access for everyone who has the talent to actually perform and there isn't this sort of um there's not this challenge of like trying to you know be chosen for a project or trying to um or that or there's this feeling of limited resources in any way you know um i just i i wish that i wish that there was just an unlimited amount of movies. I mean, like, Nollywood in Nigeria has, I don't even know how many movies <laughs> that come out. And I mean, they have, they have like, I feel like a hundred movies to one of ours, you know, that come out. And that, listen, quality isn't necessarily at the same okay. level. I was gonna but, <laughs> but my, but I think it's cool that they have so many, you know, that they have so much access and so, It'd be, if there was if there was some dream world where that could exist, I would be all for that. Now, do you want to be in a Nollywood film? I do. Get on that. I I'm I I'm getting Anybody on it. Anybody watching from Nollywood? Whoever's watching, caster. I'm down. <laughs> I'm around. What is your best and worst advice you've ever received? Oh, that's a good question. Um, best advice is. To keep there's there's this saying of keeping keeping it even like mm -hmm. keep it even so 
don't don't get too high off the highs and don't get too low off the lows just kind of you know keep the balance going and and take it all in stride and just appreciate everything just have gratitude for everything um that all is good like everything that happens even the bad stuff that all is for the good you know the worst advice <laughs> i think i've gotten is oh that's good what's the worst worst the worst advice the worst advice is um this is and i it's you got to look out for you only like you got to look out for you and you know i've i've found that when i come from that standpoint that it keeps it it sort of put blind, puts blinders on me but when i come from the standpoint of like thinking about the good of everyone then i always get whatever i need at the same time mm -hmm. you know so that's that's kind of my motto in general is like really thinking about it from the standpoint of like well how is this going to serve all of us like can we all win together kind of a thing and I'll that. win along you know i wish everybody thought like that <laughs> I feel like this I industry know. would be doing a lot better. It'd be if different. It'd be different. <laughs> Lastly, but not least, what are your goals? Where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? <sighs> I mean, my dreams of, of playing a queen would obviously have led to me being a queen. Of course. So I'd be the queen of the world. <laughs> Maybe. Well, uh, what? by I then hope... we'd probably be like in Mars and so, so queen of the universe. I hope that comes true. And in the next 10 years, nice. that be a is good queen. a lot of work to be done. I know. So well, let's all luck. get on it because yeah. we need to make this happen. Well, if we take your advice of all working together Thank to you. make you the queen, I think Hello. that easily in five years that could happen. Now we're tough. See? <laughs> We are on board with it. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a pleasure to have you it in the studio. So with me. much fun. Can you please tell everybody <laughs> watching where they can catch the next episode of Rizzoli and Isles and where they can find you on the internet? Absolutely. So you can catch the next Rizzoli and Isles on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. on TNT, 8 Central. And uh, you can find me online at Idara Victor, I D A R A Victor. Um, on IG, that's my name. On um, Twitter, that's my name. And idaravictor.com. Fantastic. And you guys can find me on Twitter at the Kylie Hodges or Instagram just at Kylie Hodges. Idara, it was a pleasure to talk to you today. So Thank fun, you so Kylie. much for joining me. It's fun. Bye, everybody. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.